Aloha, I'm Lila Berg, and we're here at Kauai Ha'o Church, ready to chat with the people who inform, inspire, and impact our everyday lives. Thank you for tuning in to Island Focus. People might think that Kauai Ha'u is a museum. It's a very living place and significant not only to our li'i, but to the present. Absolutely. We're not a museum. We're a live, breathing church, vibrant even today. There are thousands who have come through here because of our queen, Ka'ahumanu. And we still desire to do that today, that thousands more will come through here and know our Lord Jesus Christ. But it's only because she set the foundation for us. And then also, on our left over here, we also have the elected kings and queens, and they also perpetuated the same things that our queen did. And all we're trying to do for the future is to focus on what and who is Christ for our society today. And along those lines are the values, right? Yes. The values not only of the kingdom, but also of Christianity and the future of aloha and Ha'a Ha'a and Pono. Oh, absolutely. We, we want to perpetuate all of those. It's not any accident that those values that which we cherish very dearly in our culture also have a foundation in the, in the scriptures, in the Bible. So we want to continue those, those values into perpetuity. I'm with Deanna Dolier with the Hawaii Association of Independent Schools, HAIS. Thank you for being here, by the way. It's my and absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Can you help us uh, understand your role and what this HAIS is? Absolutely. The Hawaii Association of Independent Schools serves all of our member independent schools on, across the state, um, along with other organizations. And I am currently serving as the Director of Programs and Services, which encompasses just about everything we do. What is it when you say everything that you do? Because there's a perception in Hawaii, of course, that public schools are lesser than private schools. Mm -hmm. um, and you and I have worked our whole lives to equalize that conversation. So what we do is we support education at our schools first and foremost, but with the end goal of really hoping to advance education across our state through partnerships. So we work very closely with other organizations, including the DOE, including the Charter Network and the Commission, to name a few, and then other organizations like Olelo in some of our events, all with the um, goal of advancing student education in Hawaii. We were chatting a little bit earlier in the program uh, about your joy and your enthusiasm uh, in your profession, but also in your life. You have two small children, and so mm -hmm. of course education is important to you. When you look at the role that HEIS plays uh, in the lives of even families, how do you see the future? In supporting our schools, we're supporting students. We're supporting student learning. We're helping shape who this generation of people is going to be. And that affects all of us in our state. It comes back to the values that we hold here in Hawaii, the values of aloha, the values of growth, the values of affecting people across the world, now so more than ever before, is it incredibly important to keep that vision in mind. So, you know, what we try to do is create opportunities for our schools, our students, um, our educators, our administrators, and our community to engage in that discussion, in that growth, and in those opportunities. And you do a lot of work also with leadership development with right. the heads of school. Mm -hmm. We run several conferences a year. We do professional development. We try to take advantage of the exceptional leadership that we have on the island and leverage those opportunities while also bringing in experts from across the world. We have conferences that you know, host keynotes from all over the place where, again, we bring to the table not just our independent member schools, but also DOE, charter, educators from Hawaii and abroad all to share in best practices and keep the conversation moving forward. And how interesting it must be for you to be in the middle of those, not only educational discussions, but mm -hmm. also conversations on how 
children can learn best. That's right, and that's probably what gets us all out of the bed, out of bed in the morning, <laughs> is the fact that we get to have those conversations with leadership in Hawaii, school leaders, with uh, teacher leaders that are doing just amazing things day in and day out that don't get recognized or seen all the time. But we can help kind of channel that, put them on in the spotlight a little bit um, through some of the work that we do. It goes back to takes a community, and we are a community of learners and educators hoping to do that here. So a snapshot, very quick snapshot of the perfect educational day. For a student, I think that would be giving them opportunities to explore, to be creative, to be collaborative. The opportunity, I guess, to really think about and engage in the type of thinking that will carry them through a lifetime. So it doesn't really come down to the subject matter or you know, the, the curriculum as we think about in a textbook. It comes down to the experiences that our educators and our schools are giving students to grow into those people. Thank you so much for your leadership and for your contribution. We've been talking with Deanna Dolier with the Hawaii Association of Independent Schools. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. here with Tim Sakahara with the Department of Transportation. Thanks Lila for having me. It's a pleasure <laughs> to be here. Yeah, I am the Communications Director for the Hawaii Department of Transportation, the spokesperson basically representing all 15 airports, 10 commercial harbors, 2,500 lane miles across the state, and all 2,600 employees of the department that are work dedicated to keeping the state moving forward. Basically, what does your job as communications officer uh, entail? If you count just Honolulu International Airport alone, there's really, in most areas or airports across the country, there's a whole communications team just for that one airport. But I'm responsible for speaking on behalf of all 15 airports, 10 harbors, and all the highways in the state, separated by an ocean on all the islands as well. But really, we try to get across that the State Department of Transportation is doing a lot of positive things uh, across all departments, the airports, highways, and harbors, uh, trying to modernize the facilities, uh, make the airports. If you go, anyone goes to the Honolulu International Airport right now, they're bound to see construction in one area, if not multiple areas, uh, from the time they park to the time they get to the gate and things. So there's a lot going on, and we try to convey those messaging and those efforts. So I was quite astounded to see all the machinations, I guess, uh, at the airport, but also on the streets, you know, that we get so upset about how the street, the condition of the streets, but there's, there's more involved, and, and it's not just taxpayer money. It, you're absolutely right. In fact, thanks for bringing that up, <laughs> because it's true. There is kind of a misconception. With the Department of Transportation, it is kind of run like a business, if you will, in the fact that the revenue we bring in is self-sustaining. We don't get money from the general fund. So people and their income taxes, let's say, that money does not come to the Department of Transportation. Instead, it's all generated by revenue from user fees, so airports like the airlines and landing fees, renting out space, parking concessions. Uh, on the highways uh, division, it, money comes from um, things like when you register your vehicle and the weight fees and the fuel tax. So if people don't own a vehicle or they don't buy gas, they're not paying actually for the highway system. Same thing with harbors as well. That's funded by tariffs, wharfage fees, rental space, leases, and things like that. So it's not the traditional taxpayer money. And so we have to go and generate that um, in order to pay for those improvements. We still have to go to the legislature to get approval to spend that money, um, but it's not traditional taxpayer money. And there is some confusion also from, I think, the, the public's perspective on which is a county road, which is a state road. Basically, um, you're all working together. We know from the driver's perspective, they don't really much care if it's a county road or state <laughs> road. They just want it fixed. And that's understandable because people want to drive on those smooth surfaces. It is one of those reasons why we did go to the legislature this session to try to get an increase uh, in some of those user fees, some of which have only been raised four times since statehood. Um, you know, unfortunately, it didn't, didn't happen. So the focus on the highway specifically is system preservation versus the large capacity projects. What does that mean? System preservation means trying to maximize what we already have, make it better, try to expand it, build shoulder lanes, restripe to get more lanes with existing infrastructure rather than spending hundreds of million dollars trying to build new roads, which takes years to happen and goes through environmental clearances and things. If we can't 
maintain and operate the roads we have now, there's no sense building new roads. So we want to take what we already have and maximize it to its fullest capability. You must get excited when you just walk around town or drive, arrive in airports because you know that every form of transportation uh, is within your touch. Yeah, it's true. We directly impact every person, visitor or resident in the state every single day in one way or another with either through airports, highways or harbors or the goods and services that they're buying and producing are all going there by the Department of Transportation. So yeah, and I understand people, you know, we having that impact we have a big attention focus on people. If I could snap my fingers and get the road fixed instantaneously, <laughs> we'd all be billionaires and I'd be great. Unfortunately, there is work that has to be done. We do, I promise, we do try to do it in the most least impactful well, way. To and if your work. enthusiasm is part of the energy repairs, we're in good shape. Thank you for joining us. Tim Sakahara with the Department of Transportation. How church was built in? Well, the church started in 1820, but the, this building, the fifth building, began in 1837. And what they did is they went out to West Beach and even as far as Waianae to mine coral. Each block is a thousand pounds, wow. and there are 14,000 of them that make up our church. You, you, you got to understand, we didn't have any cranes, we didn't have anything here. So to create this building and this roof, to me, it's a masterpiece of architecture, especially for the 1840s. And it was the only building of its time. It was the only building, period. Nothing matched it whatsoever. They had wooden buildings down there, but nothing matched it. They had the wooden uh, missionary homes, but this was the structure. Anytime anyone would come into Oahu and to Honolulu, this is what they would see. This is their landmark. It's been renovated several times, but it's just a beautiful reminder. Oh, absolutely. And I hope it still is a reminder and still attracts people for centuries and generations to come. I have the pleasure of being with Cindy Adams, President and CEO of Aloha United Way right now, and I want to thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Well, thank you so much. This is such a beautiful place to be. Well, and it speaks a lot of the work that you, you're doing with as a leader of Aloha United Way, the prevention and intervention of many of society's challenges. It does, and I, and I think it represents, you know, churches represent compassion and tolerance, I think, and I think that's also a very significant part of the work that we do and the work that nonprofits do in the community. You're a fairly new president at AUW. I am. Your priorities, of course, are uh, coherent with the mission, but mm -hmm. in particular, you have some special interests. We do. Um, there are three really very specific initiatives that we're focused on. Um, in addition to our community impact work. Um, one is early childhood development. Um, another is active aging. So how do we help our elders um, age gracefully so that they can enjoy their quality of life as long as possible? And then the third area is really about homelessness for us. Actually, all three areas talk about living comfortably mm -hmm. and thriving in mm -hmm. Hawaii. Um, I know you share that you were born in Japan mm -hmm. and you grew up in Hawaii. How has that influenced your leadership? I grew up in a very humble household. Um, we went to church every Sunday and you know a lot of it was about how do we serve our community. I remember every summer um, uh, facilitating summer programs at Kuhio Park Terrace. We would do a lot of things in the community and I think that really kind of helped to set a course for my life. And homelessness, I know, is one of the main topics of your concern. Um, yes. Did that come out of what you saw growing up? or I think that probably was a little bit in the back of my mind and in my heart. But certainly um, coming back from the mainland and living in Hawaii again, um, it was um, very obvious that, that we had a problem with homelessness. And, you know, nobody ever wakes up one day and says, I want to become homeless. There are many reasons that cause people to fall into this kind of situation. And um, it's really about understanding what those scenarios are and how we can help people move out of that situation. What troubles you the most about that? I think that it's such a large problem that it's been building over many, many years. And I know many organizations, governors, mayors have 
have um, tried to do their part in helping to address the problem. I think it's gotten to a point where many people feel it's a crisis. And it really, I think, um, requires that we come together much more as a community, coordinated and collaborating to address the problem. We've made significant progress in the nonprofit community, and certainly the mayor and the governor are working much more closely together, but there's certainly much more we can do. You know, our state is very um, generous mm -hmm. in not only with donations, but also with time and energy. Mm -hmm. How? can we stay positive as we support Aloha United Way? Well, first of all, I have to say the problems that we face are solvable. Um, so that's the hope for me, um, certainly in the work that I do and, and my commitment. Um, the second thing is, you know, I think Hawaii is a very special community and people in Hawaii, as you said, have very generous hearts and um, are always so giving to help um, the communities that we live mm -hmm. in. And I think that's something that's very special about the nonprofit community here and the work that we do is that it's here in Hawaii and it's an opportunity for people to feel like they're able to make a difference and have an impact in our communities. With so many of the issues that I know you face as mm -hmm. the leader of Aloha Naruwe and also with your, working with your staff, what gives you joy? Wow, there are lots of things and I try to remember those things at the end of the day. I think it's um, seeing the difference, you know, getting letters from people who have been served by different programs in the community and understanding that it's always about one person, one family, and the difference we can make in those lives because that's how it starts, right? Um, and it's really about seeing what we do as an organization to be a leader within the community to help um, facilitate um, resolving some of the issues that we face. So that's very rewarding for, for, for me and for the, for the team. Well, you've brought a lot of joy to this program today. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. We've been chatting with Cindy Adams, President and CEO of Aloha United Way. Thank you. What a pleasure I have now to be talking to Diane peters Wynn, Vice President of Chaminade University. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you, Lila, for having me. I know there's lots you can tell us about Chaminade, and so I'll invite you to, to share uh, what the university means to you, but also what role it plays in Hawaii. Well, I never want to miss a chance to talk <laughs> about Chaminade. It really is um, something that's been a very special experience for me already 10 years, hard to believe. That I've been there but uh, there's so many exciting things going on and I think we maybe don't always have a chance to get out there to tell the community what we're doing and um, so that's why this is really special today. Chaminade is it's almost like a secret you know it's, it, because it's it is a very special place I know for you but also yeah. for the students that I've interviewed. Yes. Tell us a little bit more about what your role is. Well um, as one of two vice presidents there I think we're really trying to provide something that is, is very unique. We're a place of higher education, but it's values-based, so you don't have that in any of the other institutions in Hawaii. It's also, and a lot of people don't know this, it's also a native Hawaiian serving institution, federally recognized as such. And for me personally, I, I know I don't look native Hawaiian, I have Hawaiian and Chinese ancestry, but um, that was a, really a deciding factor in my um, decision to come in and work and serve at Chaminade. So many years that you've been involved with Chaminade and with the pressures and financial challenges, just internationally, mm. you have great joy being there. Great joy. And I'd say that that's um, shared throughout the staff, the faculty, and, and it passes on to our students that ultimately the reason why we are there it's something that we were just talking about with we have a new president coming on board. So at the end of the summer, Dr. Lynn Babington. She is currently the interim president at Fairfield University in Connecticut. She'll be coming on board as our, as our new president. And we were telling her that exactly that joy that you just mentioned, Lila, is what makes Chaminade very different and very special for all of us. In particular, if there was one snapshot we could have of Chaminade, what would that be? I think it's, it's working directly with the students and I think um, it's thinking about our beautiful campus and, and all of the involvement and activities that there are, but I think the working directly with the students for me is what holds the special 
rewarding and gratifying feeling that I get at the end of the day. And also, you know, when you see them at commencement, I always tell people, I have the best job in the whole world because I, I can imagine trying to wake up some mornings if, if you're working in the, you know, maybe in the correctional facilities or, mm -hmm. and, but we get to see people at, at a very rare moment at their lives and they're getting their undergraduate or their graduate degree. They're surrounded by their family and friends. They're walking across that stage and I'm sitting there thinking to myself, how lucky am I? Because we've seen these students come in and they're coming, a lot of them from public schools here in Hawaii, some from the mainland. They're coming from Kamehameha, from the Catholic schools, from all over. And they're, half of them are the first generation to come to college. They're 97% of them are getting scholarships financial aid, some of them are getting Pell Grants, uh, and you see their families, and you never forget that joy because this is a defining moment. What's near and dear to my heart, personally, with Shamanad is the early, early learning program oh, that you have. yes. Thank you, Lila, for mentioning that. The Shamanad has, we have right on our campus, uh, the uh, L. Robert Allen Montessori School. It was one of the first Montessori programs, but as you said, even broader, we have a wonderful early childhood education program. So we actually produce uh, second only to UH Manoa in the number of teachers that we provide for the Department of Education here in Hawaii. It's pretty cool. Well, I appreciate all your work and certainly the contribution that Shamanad University gives to Hawaii in general. And thank you very much for sharing your time. We've been listening to and with Diane peters Wynn. Thank you for joining us Thanks and for sharing. Having me. in Kauai Ha'o Church with Kahu Kirk Kikuna. How are you? Thank you very much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me today. Actually, you're having us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Please share with us, um, not so much a little bit about this place, about your role as Kahu and sure. what it means for you particularly to be here. Sure, I'm glad to. I see my role here, first of all, I'm a pastor, uh, a Kahu in the Hawaiian term. And what we do is we shepherd our people. And it, it can be in so many different ways, mentally, emotionally, but definitely spiritually, as well as physically. But that's who we are. And that's what we're called to do and to be, especially by God. So I see my role as being a kahu in the full sense that I'm here for every uh, part of anyone's life from birth all the way um, to when they pass away and they go on to their eternal uh, reward. You do a whole lot more than being a minister. You know, you administer and you minister to others. Kauai Ha'o has a very special uh, place in Hawaii's history. Yes, of course. Um, the first church on Oahu, uh, very influential uh, and impacting the ali'i so greatly that Kahumanu made uh, the Christian religion the nation's religion. So that set the foundation for our people a way long ago. And she did that because she could see that there was, a, that there was something missing. When she did away with the old system, the kapu system, there was a void for about six months or so, and we had nothing. We, we were spiritually, in a sense, um, vacant. Then when the missionaries came, they modeled and did something, brought a, a, a new form of religion, Christianity, uh, that the Hawaiians, especially our queen, and many others, um, embraced. So they, that became the foundation for, for Kauai Ha'o. We were known because the kings and the queens were here, and they decided to make Christianity uh, the nation's religion. That affected every part of our lives, and still does today, even today. But, you know, there's so many other uh, churches, religions in town, that um, in, in a real sense, we, we've become a little bit more um, myopic in what we're trying to accomplish here. When we talk about what to, you're trying to accomplish, in this generation with so much technology and di distractions mm -hmm. and, and you know, a little bit of more unrest perhaps than we've noticed in the past, um, 
certainly a foundation here at Kauai in Hawaii can be something that can be very helpful. We hope so. As the missionaries came and offered us a foundation in, in Jesus Christ, we still try to perpetuate that today. That is, we still believe that with Christ, we have a foundation that's immovable, unshakable. Um, he is our foundation, as he was 197 years ago, so is he today. And, and we uh, pride ourselves in that. We want to be a church that's known as one who follows Jesus Christ and are his disciples. That's what we believe gives us um, our strength, uh, our walking papers, if you will, our mission, and also looks to lead us into the future. It's because of him. So you've been here for a number of years, and in one sentence, what would be your vision, your dream for the role that Koihao would play in Hawaii? You, you don't like to ask difficult questions, do you? <laughs> it's a short yeah. interview. A short, oh, short interview. Okay. I would love to see Koihao be the leader in making disciples in Hawaii. That's what I would love to see. Wonderful. Well, you certainly are providing that leadership yourself, and I thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. Kahu Kurt Ikuna from Kauaihau Church. Thank you very much for listening. Mahalo to Kauaihau Church and to you for tuning in to Island Focus. I'm Lila Bird. Aloha and malama pono. Take care of each other. See you soon.